welcome to Netting Media. And uh, thank you for doing this. This is our second try because <laughs> the first one, there were some problems with the video because my internet kept on cutting off. Um, Walter, can you give me a brief history in the story of the character of Walter? Brief history in the story of the character of Walter. Okay, well, I'd say that the, uh, the story uh, of seeking, which I think is what we're talking about here, is, uh, started, well, I didn't know what I was looking for, I guess, but there was a feeling of um, deficiency, of lack, of, uh, I thought, I wasn't in on the joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought there was some kind of understanding or um, something about life that I just, I'm like, if people know something and I just, I need to know it, you know? Or I need to un at least understand it and be able to incorporate it into my life somehow or uh, adopt a, a different worldview. Or, I didn't know. But uh, I knew that I wasn't feeling like this, this was enough. This was it, you know? So um, <clears throat> some of the terms are interesting now that I think of them because uh, it's like self-realization, you know? I remember checking out a self-realization fellowship. Are you familiar with that? Uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, autobiography of, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, I remember how disappointed I was actually when I went um, <clears throat> because, so I checked out a self-realization fellowship, you know, I'm gonna realize the self, capital S. And uh, there was somebody there who had been with them for a very long time. And he was, uh, I think it was a monk. And he was just saying, that the meditation that he was doing created a force field around him that protected him. <laughs> but I, 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 the reason why I'm laughing is because I was so disappointed that this was what was coming out of self-realization because I didn't, it didn't seem, I don't know, it just didn't seem like, uh, I'm like, wow, that's all you really get after all those years is you know, a, a sort of method to shield yourself from the, you know, from what's coming in. And, you know, so I remember being like, all right, well, that's probably not it. And uh, just checking out different things. Um, <clears throat> and the whole time I'm thinking, well, I think the thing that was driving me, uh, and um, it's an interesting idea to think about being driven, you know? Uh, Cause like, I don't know where thoughts come from. I don't know where these words are coming from. I don't know what anything is, you know? Um, and I, you know, I was driven to figure this thing out. You know? um, but this me was just, I'm saying the me, um, it was a, uh, a feeling that there was somebody in here who needed to figure things out, that there was somebody in here, here, I don't know, I don't know where that person was, that me, but that self needed to be fixed, to be healed. Uh, so this is what the search was to heal that self. And I think the funny thing in the end, not to spoiler alert, but uh, as uh, UG said, UG Krishnamurti, uh, he discovered, or I don't know his words, he probably didn't say it that way, but there was no self to realize. You know, the clear seeing or the realization for no one is that this thing that you've been trying to work on and fix and heal and repair uh, was never there in the first place, you know, it was never a real 
thing and needed me. <laughs> it's just so funny to think about. Uh, all the time you work on a thing that's not, that doesn't exist. But uh, so that was that. Uh, I don't know if you want me to get more into that sort of path, but uh, I was on a path, you know, and now we talk about a pathless path because there's nowhere to, there's nowhere to get to here. You know, it's already, it's always already. That's what I love about this message. It's beautiful. And I love what you're doing. I, I'm really grateful because um, I think the fact that you would want to talk to me, because, you know, you, you mentioned sometimes I like to talk to just ordinary People who aren't teachers, don't have websites, don't hold satsangs, don't write books. And um, I think when when I was first checking things out, I didn't see any of that. I saw sages, you know, and sages to me meant a, a special person who had something that I had to get, you know. And, and people that, you, you also asked me, I might make reference to our last conversation a few times, if that's okay. Um, just because we covered so many beautiful things and explored so many different uh, concepts and aspects of what people talk about and language. And ultimately it doesn't matter because I think, well, I'll give you a concept. Of course, nothing is the truth. I mean, not, it's all bullshit. Um, I think I quoted Ramesh who said, um, Anytime, <laughs> no, anything anyone has ever said at any time is a concept and therefore not the truth because once you put something into words, it becomes a concept. So this, um, so I'm gonna, uh, the concept is that there's two levels and there's no levels. There's no steps, no levels, nothing, nowhere to get to. So this is just to an analogy. Um, but let's just say this line, like above this line, there's nothing. You can't speak to that. There's no words. It's not even nothing. It's not the word nothing. It's not the absolute. It's not creative intelligence. I don't know what word people, God. It's just like if I really wanted to talk radical non-duality, I have to sit here in silence. The only problem with that is somebody would turn that into a teaching and think that I'm doing something special. <laughs> it's really, so that cannot be spoken. It just can't. So anything that you're hearing is really, it's as radical, I guess, as you can get with, with speaking, you know? And so that's why you say everything is point is a pointer. We're pointing to something that can't be spoken. And it, not only can it not be spoken, but it can't be known because there's no one to know it. If anything, and this is a concept and it's also bullshit, and I might say that a lot, but I suppose it might make sense that <laughs> everything comes from this. Everything is an expression of this. Everything is this, maybe you could say manifested or something like that. Uh, in this, some people call it a dream, the dream of I am, because, you know, once it comes down, it has to become I am. You know, and that, Mr. Gerardi used to say, stay with the I am. Uh, and then it drops out. This is why they call this a top down teaching, I think, because as you go down further, you get more into the personal self, you know, and, um, these are things I, you know, that uh, some of the teachers I came across passed on to me. And we touched on this before. You were, can I use profanity? I think I already said bullshit. But, well, you said you were fucking with me. And I loved it because anytime I would say something, <laughs> isn't that dualistic? And then I'd have to be like, well, you know. Uh, and I loved it because you kept hammering me with that. And it made it fun because... Well, I love these kind of discussions. Um, I've seen a couple of them in recent times. And uh, the way, well, I shouldn't say they're way more fascinating, but they are fascinating. Um, 
to see people interact in that way rather than just pure question answer or just one person talking. Um, anyway, <laughs> bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so this teachings, like say that start bottom up, they're, they're helping the person, you know, their work, you say meditation. You know, when I came to my, and, and you use the word uh, pandering to the seeker. Um, and we talked about that. We talked about compassion. Um, when I went to my friend Stephen Wingate's house um, and I was filled with anxiety and depression and I was going through a very difficult time. Um, he didn't tell me there's no one there to be depressed. You know, I remember I walked in with a giant Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> And uh, and I was like compla complaining about my anxiety. <laughs> so of course he's like, well, first of all, you might want to cut back on the caffeine. You know, practical advice. Do you know what I mean? And he taught me a little meditation, very quick, easy, uh, quick meditation that I could settle down. I could relax. You know, the the all these energies. You know, I'm feeling them now. Energies in the body. Um, but as we did touch on, uh, then I was a, a person with a method to calm my body down. Uh, I was still an individual or, or that me was still there that we talked about. That is this insatiable, you know, nothing's good enough for the me, you know, nothing. Understanding concepts is not good enough for the me. Because then I was a, a, a me who understood concepts. You know, you could master all of Mr. Gadada's teachings, Adi Shankara's Advaita Vedanta, Course in Miracles, you know. <clears throat> but if there's still that me, you're just a me that has, now has techniques. Now, that's not to say that those things can't be helpful. You know, I think this is where we got into some interesting things. Um, because you have that that sort of absolute and then the relative, you know. So I think the difference in the teachings is some people want to meet people where they are. And some people are just going to, this, I only talk about this enough. You know, I'm not going to come down to the level, you know, where you are here. I'm, I'm just talking here. You know what I mean? Some uh, teachings are not teachings that meet no one. <laughs> well, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> no, no, I, you're right. That's, cl that's clarity. You just, that's great. Because you you just don't. actually, you actually just, just blew my, my shtick there. I usually, I used to call my stuff radical non-duality talks and the radicality of it is I don't really actually talk about this. I just ask questions. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's the same thing. Does that mean I can't <laughs> ask you questions? The last time I was asking you. <laughs> you were. You were. No, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> I want a dialogue about this stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. No, no, go ahead, go right. ahead. I mean, yeah, it's descriptive. And and you asked me what what I like for uh, you know what uh, I resonate with, and um, absolutely. I, uh, <laughs> there can't be a prescription. There can't be any, um, I, I talked about identity, even identity, you know, there's no me. This is just a body, mind organism in which, you know, I think about like um, a lot of spiritual authors, <laughs> Authors, I use that word. Uh, a lot of spiritual authors um, will say, I didn't write the book. It just came through me. You know, a lot of them. I don't know. Did I just say all? I try not to say the word all, always, never. Um, but uh, <laughs> often they will say that. And then you wonder, well, are there other things that you're doing? Like, in other words, the book came through you. <laughs> Are there other are there other things that don't just come through? Like it all just 
we're not doing anything. You can't say, I didn't write the book, but I, I made dinner. You know, I don't know, just the way I look at it. But, um, but for some reason, I think sometimes they think something, there's some kind of channeling or, or, or something additional going on than other than normal life. I, I think it's just consistent with what they're saying that there's no one here. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just no. it's because they're speakers of um, your speaker is of uh, something that can't be talked about. I don't know. Just uh, <laughs> I understand well, I'm sorry. it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. When I said spiritual, I was just speaking. Um, oh, the channelers. Very generally, um, because it seems like that it, that would be something they would all agree upon. Oh yeah, I didn't make the book. Okay, so, okay, got it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not again. I'm not picking on it. I, I, I love I love his conversation with you, Walter, because we just go back and forth, and we we we. I don't know. It's just fun. Go this ahead. This is the only ahead. way I know how to do it. I I, I mean yeah I yeah. Story, story of my life. I don't know. I I could. Uh, oh no no no. Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> well, I could get into it a little. Well, okay. So, the first introduction to uh, non-duality was a guy named Floyd Henderson. And um, he's got books, a blog. Uh, he's been at it for well over 20 years. I, I, I um, was introduced to him, say about the year 2000, early 2000. And I only know that because my daughter's 20. <laughs> so uh, there were a few things with him and my daughter that I, I always remember that she was uh, an infant. Uh, I'll tell you one more story about my daughter being little. Um, so whatever just comes to me, I have to say it. I'm sorry. I know it's like all over the place. But I was at a Wayne Lickerman retreat. And I this is the only retreat that I ever went to. Um, <clears throat> and it was a weekend in, in Massachusetts. And... Um, my wife at the time brought my daughter to come visit me during one of our breaks <clears throat> so we could have lunch together. And she was at, she was a toddler and she's pointing to things and saying, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this? You know, I don't know if you've ever seen a kid do that. What's this, what's this, what's this? It was beautiful. And one of the guys there says, consciousness, <laughs> like everything she points to. Because, um, well, in that teaching, you know, consciousness is everything. Everything is consciousness. So <clears throat> it was just kind of funny. Because um, I would never tell my daughter that. That would be weird. That's a table, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Floyd Henderson. Um, so the, the first, this stuff is shocking. I mean, it's radical. It, it doesn't seem radical like you and I sitting here talking about it so much, but uh, I released as much as it did back then. I mean, my mind was being blown constantly because uh, <clears throat> uh, like this shirt says, get a grip. Uh, you know, <laughs> anything I tried to get a grip on was smashed. Um, so starting with my body, let's just say that. So I would, work with Floyd and he would say well, what, what would happen if I cut off your arms would you still be you I'd say oh yeah and then he'd go through everything you know okay where are you I couldn't find it all right so that that kind of left me a little dazed and confused and uh and then he would attack um I say attack because he was kind but you know it was like uh a surgeon, you know, just trying to pluck out these ideas that I had about myself. I am a chef. I am a husband. I am this. I am that. You know, these roles, any identity that I had, <laughs> smash, you know. But again, I was still a me who now thought <clears throat> I had no identity. <laughs> well, that none of them were real or, you know, they were all a projection you know, which is relatively true. Uh, you know, everything 
in, in the world of experience is a projection of mine, you know, even Emerson, you know, I don't know Emerson. I only, <laughs> I see an image on that screen from what I think Emerson is in here, you know? Uh, <laughs> so all that kind of stuff. And I had a great, um, anyway, moving forward. So I would listen to, the, at the time there was Urban Guru Cafe, which was a great podcast. Um, you know, prior to nothing, this, these are the things we had. You know, I did the best I could. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding, but uh, it was it was good, and I heard uh, Stephen Wingate on there, which is funny because the podcast is from Australia, and Stephen lived about a half an hour from me. So I'm listening to, you know, Gilbert Schultz from uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, producing a podcast, interviewing a guy that lives a half an hour from me. <clears throat> so once I realized that, I started going over his house and um, and uh, we would just have these regular types of meetings, you know, but also became friends. And uh, then we do what we're doing in, in a way, you know, just have coffee and, and discuss these things and, and uh, in different modalities. Um, Course in Miracles, uh, a little Neville Goddard, um, <clears throat> I am that. Um, Mr. Goddard seemed he, he seemed to be uh, on the top of everyone's list um, in terms of people who were able to communicate this well, um, and just kind of flowed like that. Um, and I, well, you mentioned a oneness experience that you had had. And I, I think that's interesting. Sorry. The, the glimpse, the glimpse, the giant glimpse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's call it a <laughs> Did glimpse. you have some of those too? Well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you I, were talking I, about that. Yeah, talk about that. I, I don't know if I, if I did mention this. I just, I just kind of talked about what I guess could be called a shift, but um, the glimpse was again, not to repeat myself, but I was <laughs> a me that had a glimpse. I was a me that had had a oneness experience. Uh, so I felt a deeper understanding. It, it was similar to, um, you know, we're always, well, again, I'm saying always, but speak for myself. Uh, I, I kind of look for a context to put things in you know, or uh, <clears throat> maybe I'm able to hear somebody express it. I'm like, yeah, that's what, that's what that was. Um, and it was Thomas Merton, uh, who I think, I'm not sure, I think Trappist could be wrong about that. Not that it matters, but he was a monk. Um, and he had a oneness experience. He was on the street. Well, I won't tell his, I tell mine, but mine, to my memory is almost identical is I, it was in the morning having my morning coffee, just like now I'm looking around and there's a hustle and bustle. People are going to work, you know? And uh, <clears throat> I just felt like we were all the same. I mean, everyone was thinking about the same things essentially, you know, gotta go to work. You, you never see a movie like you, <laughs> Uh, there's audio of like what people's thoughts, you know, like, oh, I'm doing this. Oh, you, you can kind of get tuned in. I felt like tuned in in a way. And I was just looking around like, well, we're all really the same, you know, same desires and fears and all this stuff. And, and just the, the human condition. Um, sorry, you say something. You look like you were going for the button. <laughs> I can always, I can always tell when you're about to. You're like, <laughs> no, no. I just, oh. I just wanted, I just wanted to say that isn't that glimpse like the the ultimate drug? Oh, and yeah. then, and then the come the come down is so harsh. I mean, you mm. always want to get that. You always want to get that. It's almost kind of like became become an addiction and seeking. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a drug. Well, I mean, I, in the interest of time, I didn't get into sort of seeking uh, from the very beginning because that was, uh, I would say, in a way, drugs and alcohol. Um, not that I have any problem with that. I enjoy a, a beverage every now and then. Um, but as you know, it's just like the way I listen to um, your channel now, as opposed to that. Now I listen, I just, oh, we touched on this too. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, enjoyment is just in the thing itself. It's just listening to a podcast. I'm not thinking I'm going to get anything out of it. You know, there's not a me that's like, oh, if I listen intently enough, I can hear the, you know, read between. There's something in there I'm going to get. There was always something to get out of things. And meditation, we um, we we discussed. Uh, I was going <clears> to <throat> come out of the meditation enlightened. Something there was a result I was looking for. Uh, it wasn't just to sit and be and yeah whatever arises just yeah kinda, you know what's wrong with that i mean that's amazing yeah yeah i i used to uh tell jim you know when i was when i was seeking when i was heavy into seeking that i used to rewind the uh you know go back into him like maybe i missed the word that jim said in his youtube mm. maybe maybe that's the key that's the key and then it's of course after you know after i watched it a couple of years later you know, there was a couple of days that I just laughed and laughed at what Jim was saying and all the questions, which is really, really funny to me. Because when, when I was seeking, I held on to every single word. You know, I'm like, oh, maybe that word contraction, if I hear it enough. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, talking about, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Walter. Right, right. No, I mean. Um, By the way, we have amazing. a podcast now, eh? We have a podcast now. Oh, you do? Yeah, so oh, it's on, on SoundCloud. It's going to be on Spotify too, and also going to be on Apple soon. So, Sweet. yeah, yeah, All right. It's I'll good to it work. You know, what I'm saying it's sometimes it's good to work clean the house, listening to something, kind of like listening to music. Um, totally. Yeah. You know, other, the other reason is uh, uh, when I work, I only have one ear pod in, so you know, in case anyone, I mostly work alone, but. Um, you know, anyway, I need to be tuned into what's going on out here too. So um, music's not always the best with one thing in. So I do uh, enjoy the podcast. Um, but I think what we're getting at is um, when the illusion of a me, let's say, or the belief or the felt sense, <clears throat> excuse me, of a me is there, it's only going to hear things from that perspective. So even if you talk about no me, it's like, okay, so there's like a lessening, there's a loosening, there's a, <laughs> you know, but if a shift uh, occurs and it doesn't occur, and, and this is all bullshit too, this is why I want to just keep, you know, nothing I say uh, is the truth. Um, um, so it's, I can only attempt, you know, and it's going to be a poor attempt and I'm going to be a walking contradiction. We were quoting um, Paul Morgan Summers that you were having a drunken conversation and that's, you know, there's no way you can not have a drunken conversation about this, you know, it has to sound bonkers. But, but isn't, this, the, isn't this topic so intoxicating though? We can talk yeah, well, I can, we can talk to it for hours and hours. Sometimes that's why I have to cut it into an hour. There was there was one uh, conversation that had it lasted for three hours and forty five minutes, and uh, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. And there's one that's longer actually. There's another one I forgot about that one, which is like about five hours. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. We just kept on talking and talking and talking, and we're just like having a blast talking about it. You know, trying to describe the indescribables. It's like a like a late night drunken conversation talking about nothing. Yes, which yes. probably sounds super crazy to a lot of people listening to it. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I was mentioning um, that I like this kind of thing, and um, one speaker 
is, um, you know, Ella, Ella May Sophia, am I saying that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she and her partner, I don't remember his name, but <clears throat> this is reason. And it just comes like a YouTube, you know, like I'll just be like, oh, that looks interesting. You know, I'll check that out. So she's uh, answering questions on YouTube. People are typing in questions. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's all right on. I'm, I'm resonating. I'm like, yep, good stuff. And um, he's like, oh, can I, <laughs> can I uh, chime in? Can I add my two cents? And she's like, sure. Um, and they're clearly in love. And it's really, a, it's, a, it's cool, you know? And he starts, like I said before, we'll say down here. And there's no up or down. There's no higher. I don't want to imply that this is higher, lower, better, anything like that. This is just, I can't help but look at things in this way. Um, so in the top down teaching. Um, so anyway, he's <clears throat> addressing the person and the person's like how to help the person. And I'm, I'm going to give you some things to do. Uh, <laughs> she's, this is not what I'm pointing to, you know, which is beautiful. It's not that he's wrong and she's right. She's just saying, this is not what I'm pointing to. This is not what my broadcast is about. You know, and she went outside for a cigarette. And <laughs> I just watched this. This is fresh in my mind. Um, and so he kept going with his advice. And then she came. But it was just so cool because it, it was like real life. And <clears throat> um, it's, it's like a reality uh, TV show couple. Yes. Yes. <laughs> one, <laughs> yeah. Yes. But see, I haven't no seen it. Gets, I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, well, it's new. And, you know, uh, I like I, I mentioned her name because, um, you know, when you asked me last time about uh, people, that I enjoy listening to. I, I think I gave you the Mount Rushmore of non-duality, which is a, a typical response, I think. <clears throat> so I thought I I'm sorry, I thought you were going for the button again. I keep pausing every time I think you're gonna jump in. <laughs> no. no, 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 who who was the Mount Rushmore again that you mentioned before? Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I don't speakers. think I said Mount Rushmore. I just no, no, no. But who are yeah, yeah? Who are the speakers that, well, that, that you mentioned that before? Be, you know, well, that would be like Tony G Parsons. I should say the full name. I don't know. I, well, sometimes this can be a little inside, you know, thing when we just say first name. But Tony Parsons, uh, Jim Newman, Andreas Muller. Um, I also named uh, Tim Pliss, You know, but. Um, you know, and the guys that helped me, Steve, you know, I'd say helped me, but, you know, they were guiding me. They were kind to me. They were compassionate. They uh, uh, they walked me through some really, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have been able to get through I Am That and stuff like it, Cause of Miracles without a little help, you know. <laughs> Not that you need to get through those things. And again, you don't need to understand them. You know, this whole thing of, um, well, like the shift, right? So maybe I should just talk about that. Just, just not because the stories don't matter. And I think we're, well, I shouldn't say we're all clear on that, but I think most of your uh, people that you interview will emphasize how unimportant and insignificant. <clears throat> And I think the only reason I even want to mention it, because I didn't know this until, again, the first time I ever talked about this stuff was with you the last time. So, and when you he hear the words that are coming out, you say, oh, wow, you know, like I never, you know what I mean? Like I'm observing my own, whatever's going on here all the time. It's, it's a curiosity about, so it went from this desperation to, fix and change and, uh, walter walter you know, yeah yeah <laughs> go go back to that go that to that apparent happening if it did not happen to anyone because people are going to be looking for that video now because that that one was was not released so if you can talk oh, about yes. that again yeah. oh, 
<laughs> oh, no doubt, no doubt. The, the normalcy um, of it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, the normalcy. Well, that that's that is yeah. I think see, I think what was fun about that conversation, I think you saw like something dawned on me while we were talking about it, you know, and I because I had never tried to put it into words really. So, I'm so uh, I'm sitting in a coffee shop, and I have a deep resentment. <laughs> Um, and these wheels are spinning. And maybe some people can relate to this. Um, you're just mulling over the same thing, you know? Oh, by the way, would you let me know by when it's 8.30? Because I, I do have to work today. Uh, okay, great. I'd love to have a five-hour conversation. We could do that maybe on a Monday sometime. But um, uh, yeah, we, we will have to cut it off at that time. But anyway, um, I'm sitting there with a resentment and I should have said this date, I wish they, you know, I wish this would have happened and should have and could have and um, as if I replay it enough, I don't know. It's just, but who's doing, no one's doing that, right? So anyway, this has happened and I'm drinking my coffee. Um, and then apparently, and you can pepper in the word apparently, before and after every word, if that helps people to realize <laughs> that I'm not really talking about anything true um, or real, it, but it seems real, you know? It's, it seems, so it was just like, <laughs> like that. And <laughs> it was like a clear scene, I guess. I wasn't seeing from within that me that I was describing. That me, I was just seeing. And it wasn't me seeing, it was just seeing that this body, mind, whatever. I'm using body, mind, organism, because that was a phrase that was common, you know? So I think we pull from whatever words we're familiar with, and uh, obviously. Um, but it doesn't mean anything. I'm not subscribing to anything. Um, and then <clears throat> I guess it was just like life itself. I don't know. It was just, oh, wow. It's just sitting in a chair with a resentment, drinking a coffee. And everything else was the same. It, it was like, if you could take out a me and then be able to view the world of appearances without a me, it, I'm, but you know, and I, obviously it's not me. It's not me, it's just seeing. I don't know, you know, it's weird. You know, so after that, it, it really was that things were just, uh, just arising, just happening to no one, by no one. Uh, what else could I, I mean, it would, and I mean, the, the resentment did stop eventually, but there was a moment that was so cool because it didn't have to stop. It wasn't magical and mystical and birds and flowers and rainbows and beauty. It was a dark, coffee shop like a regular dude with a resentment drinking a coffee and, and it didn't have to stop nothing has to change nothing has to change it already is <laughs> it's always already it's always already it's sitting in a coffee shop with a resentment it's talking to emerson it's discussing concepts it's it's being wrong i could express something way off base you know that's another thing I like to mention. When if if um, a me or a sense that I am the author of my actions, or I'm the doer, or I'm the controller, or this is my life. See, I don't have a life. You know, I don't have a life to fix. Uh, <clears throat> but if 
I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, now I know, which is perfect for what I was going to say, is that it's okay if everything comes out completely garbled and distorted and makes no sense to anyone. It doesn't matter because that is what we're talking about. And absolute clarity uh, and everyone thinking that I should be some kind of teacher because what I'm saying is so magnificent, that's also it. But it's not a better it. I think we, we got into the course and I mentioned there's a line, no hierarchy and illusions. You know, if we're dropping below that line, it's all bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we, it's all only, it's, it's all only an attempt to point to that which cannot be described. And uh, some attempts, at, you know, resonate, as we say, more than others. Um, and the ones that resonate with me are the ones that don't claim that I am anything. You know, I don't want to get specific because I don't want it to sound like I'm critiquing any teachings. But I just, um, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to say I am awareness, consciousness, or, you know, there's not, I don't need to, uh, it's just what it is. I don't... Yes, please. I thought you were going to. I was just, I'm just listening. I'm just listening here. Kind of like I'm nodding my loving head. your expressions, man. I'm... All right. So yeah. So <laughs> so the funny thing was, I just continued what I was doing, uh, which means um, I was still like kind of reading the same books and doing the same thing. But then I guess this is where you could put into words that seeking fell away because again, that's when anything that was like, seemed like a path was kind of like, oh, that's when the, the clarity of, uh, we talked about this too, is uh, distinguishing between teachings because I, I couldn't tell the difference you know, between the radical, um, even though I understood that concept of, oh, this helps the person. This is just talking about absolute and relative and noumenon, phenomenon. Uh, and uh, <laughs> just funny how all that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it just fell away because there's, there's no self to realize. Why would you continue on a self-realization path if there's, you realize that the, the, there's no pot of gold. You know, there's a lot of wonderful uh, analogies like uh, your begging bowl is made of pure gold. You know, things like that. Um, it's already that. <laughs> well, I was telling Noel this, we we're talking about this, that after this apparent, you know, something that I've saved so much money. <laughs> I, I used to go to retreats and I used to, to buy tons and tons and tons of books. You know, I would, I would, I had, do you have Audible? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you now. Can you now? Oh, can I can you hear now? you again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you know Audible, right? It's kind of like the, the I book. hit the cough button. That's what I call it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so I used to buy like one or two or three books, you know, you're supposed to get once a month. And I think at one point I was getting like, I would type in the word consciousness, awareness, whatever, you know what I'm saying? The word enlightenment and then buy all of these books. So yeah, it, it, it's just so normal. It's nothing special. And the reason yeah. I interview, the reason I interview a lot of people that are just ordinary folks is, is there's this, there's this, um, um culture i think in 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 this apparent you know enlightenment you know scene or non-duality scene that the guru is up here and the seeker is down here when really there's no guru there's no seeker yes yes no doubt and everything everything is just <clears throat> it's and it's just so extraordinarily ordinary yes yes yeah. yes can I, i'll say something about that excuse me <clears throat> sorry about all the coughing um, so 
I told you I went to Wayne Lickerman and um, I, I do, I really like that teaching, you know, he calls it the living teaching of Advaita. And I don't know, you ever watch uh, Buddha at the gas pump? Sometimes. Okay. Did you, did you see the Wayne Lickerman? No. Okay. I've only probably watched a couple, just not, not, not even sometimes, just a couple, and I didn't really finish them. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. some are better than others. Again, we, we gravitate towards who we resonate with. Not to overuse the word resonate, but uh, just to me, it, it means someone that is expressing this in a way that sounds as close to what, what is felt here. You know, or is seen here, or is, I don't know how else to say it, you know, that it just feels like, ah, oh, yeah, that, that feels right, you know. Um, <clears throat> but what didn't feel right, <laughs> and I'm not critiquing, again, I, I keep saying that, but uh, they, they had this whole discussion about the difference between a sage and a saint. Now, interesting. He, yes, and his, uh, Yes, and his comment, uh, well, his, what he was saying was, the difference was that the saint is, it's about behavior. And, and we discussed this also uh, when you were saying you were doing a lot of saintly things. You know, you were do doing a lot of saintly things. When I was seeking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you, you were looked at as a saint, you mentioned, by some. They wanted to kiss your feet and everything else. Yeah. Um, and so that's be based on behavior. And he said that the sage. <clears throat> and a sinner too, you know, when I was partying. Just not forget about that. <laughs> you were innocent. A sinner too, a sinner too. I was sinner. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, that's a different story. That's that. This is your, this is your interview and conversation, but go ahead. <laughs> Maybe I should interview you next time. No. Um, well. That would be so much fun. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, back to uh, Saint and Sage. Um, well, first of all, one, as his teacher Ramesh made clear, one cannot commit a sin and one cannot commit a meritorious deed. So it doesn't even matter. You know, it's not your behavior. You're not the saint. You're not the sinner. Um, but anyway, uh, sage. So I got to get to this point about the sage. So he said the sage, I guess, is uh, would be the, the, the slab of meat that no longer has a sense of being a separate uh, individual, or as he would say, no longer has that false sense of authorship. Uh, other people say independent, autonomous, there's all these words, you know, that um, I'm making it happen. I'm doing the doing. You know, the doing is apparently happening. Anyway, but I was like, well, okay. Well, why does that make, this thing, a sage, what is that? I mean, it's bizarre. It's, it has a, a tinge of specialness to it. Like, oh, he's a sage, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And it's fine. It's because, and, and it sounds like a critique, but I understand it because <clears throat> we talked about this too, that this message can only be expressed through the filter of this personality and whatever ideas, concepts, thoughts are rattling around up in that noggin. And if you have come kind of more of a, through a traditional, I guess, uh, route, then you might use some of those words. And, they, and those words, and I like what you're doing again, because <clears throat> I feel like I should hit that button when I do that. Um, there is a, a sort of a demystification in, in to just talking to regular old folks who don't, who would never call, refer to this as a sage. I mean, it's, 
bizarre. Um, for me, again, for me, you know, I can only speak from here, you know. Um, but I, I thought that was interesting because I, I'm like, wow. And when I saw it, <clears throat> it was a while ago. And uh, I was like, wow, it must be cool to be a sage. <laughs> Because that's the way it was heard. Even he might have been, I'm remembering like an interview from a long, I haven't watched in years, but I just know that the word sage, what it, according to him, what it implies. Uh, but I only heard it as special, a special person. So, yeah, I'm glad we're talking about this now um, and not sort of indicating that there might be anything better, more special, no carrots, no illusions. Uh, I heard somebody say, in a way it was a, a disappointment, you know, <clears throat> which at first I did not resonate with, I have to be honest, because I was like, for me, you know, I mean, I didn't say this, but there were, I, I can only put words into it now, you know what I mean? I think I'm retroactively adding things. Uh, but I guess if there could be a feeling like this, it's this, like this is what's been pointed to, you know? This. Um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, a disappointment. So there was no disappointment, there was no disappointment, you know? But I guess as time <laughs> apparently moved on, there was uh, like, you know, uncomfortable feelings, you could say, uncomfortable energies, uh, things arising. And I would ask uh, the teachers about, you know, I guess not teachers, people in the films, we'll say, about this uncomfortableness. And they would say, well, just uncomfortableness. It's not your uncomfortableness, it's just uncomfortableness. And I was like, yeah, that's right. I, I don't know what I was, I was just like, I didn't know what to do, with, you know, not that it was, a, it was just like, there's, there are feelings that aren't like, this isn't like bliss 24 seven, you know, <laughs> it's like all that same shit comes up. It's just that, <clears throat> claiming the grabbing the <clears throat> secondary involvement the this is mine and i need to fix it i need to change it now like i said there is a just wow what a, just, it's like a it's like winning a lottery the biggest lottery ever but for no one and winning nothing you're like yay oh <laughs> yes yes yeah, I, I, I think I think when this when this apparent shift happened, it was kind of like I'm like, oh wow, this is it, and we're like, oh, this is it. It's almost like anticlimactic, like oh, this is it. This is it. And In the I'm beginning, so it's like, this is it. yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's no there's no trumpets and angels. There's no kind of like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's there's just fascinating. Fascinating. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. It, it never-ending it, it comes back to, um, I guess, it's funny that I had never thought about it uh, until we talked, but um, that it was just sitting there with a resentment. So, so it, it, it hasn't changed. It's, it's just sitting here like, uh, I mean, I'm feeling really good right now uh you know but let's say can remember recently yeah sort of nervousness which feels like a tingling and a you know in the body and yeah <clears throat> i can just tune into that i'm like wow you know i i think before there was a a desire to get rid of it <laughs> yeah you yeah know, yeah immediately yeah, and fix it. And it's almost like it a, it's almost kind of like a not escaping anymore, like bring it on kind of thing, right? Whatever happens is is just occurring, but for no one, 
that's not making any sense it's like a it's like um nervousness giddiness grieving but it's almost like a i've said it's kind of like a teflon now it just slides whatever it is it's like it's like um there's no more filters it's just flowing whatever is flowing you know what i'm saying it's 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 so hard to describe mm. and, and that's why this is a drunken conversation because we can talk about this until we're blue in the face and it's still not going to <clears throat> properly describe what it is and that makes it it make make it sound special but it's not special you know no, what i'm saying no, so no. yeah yeah see that's yeah, the dilemma I, I even... sometimes right it's when people talk about this sometimes people think oh that's something special when I when I tell this story, it's just a story. I like I don't want to emphasize that I was DJing for four hours because people might think that they have to go DJing now <laughs> for four hours because that will be a technique. Although it's fun to DJ for four hours, but it's not it. I sat down. It's it's the sitting down, and then people might think that it's a sitting down, but there's no. It, but it didn't happen to anyone. You know what I'm saying? If people kind of like. Put it in a character or in a person. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's just so. Um, and there's no um, technique or attainment of it. You know what I'm saying? So, so how do you describe that? Well, I'll, uh, well, <clears throat> you mean the the whole specialness? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I can talk about that because I was, um, I could get pretty goofy with this stuff. Um, it's almost embarrassing because I would see a speaker who I projected. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, but you project all kinds of things onto the speaker. And, you know, and they, well, you could say they don't help matters by being elevated on the stage and having a lot of the stage craft. I, I, we talked about John Troy a little bit. He, he talks about this beautifully, that all the stage craft and the um, window dressing, all that only, you know, in my humble opinion, contributes to the seeker's illusion that this person is special. So that being said, also, I would look even deeper. I would say, oh, what kind of hat are they wearing? Like, let's say you were giving a satsang. I would look at you and I'd say, I got to get a hat like that. And I'd look at your glasses. Everything was special. There wasn't anything ordinary. I'd be like, oh, and, you know, like anything you did. And I would want to learn about your habits, your morning routine. What kind of coffee do you drink? Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But <clears throat> if you say, if you told your story, yeah, absolutely. If there was anything in there that I could replicate, uh, I would try. Like, oh, if you mentioned a book, you know, I remember, I think Floyd told me he was reading Consciousness and the Absolute by Gene Dunn, which is a Nisargadatta Maharaj. Uh, he said he was reading that. And then at one point he just did something, I don't know, clicked, I guess. And he just put the book down, I was like, Pfft. you know? And so what do you think I did? <laughs> I got that book trying to figure out what page was he on? <laughs> when that happened, you know? It, it just so has nothing to do with anything um, because nothing happened because it already, and we made this part, but it was already always it. You know, you could be reading a cookbook. Doesn't matter. There's nothing special about it. But yeah, I, so my point is it's ridiculous like to try to learn the story and figure out what was, what contributed to this awakening? <clears throat> silly, well, it's not silly. I, I, you know, again, I feel like I was silly. I should say that. I, my, I, 
I look back and I'm like, <laughs> that's kind of silly. That I thought, or even dress, you know, not that I, I mean, I never dress, I, I was always like working 80 hour work weeks and very much in the world. So I wasn't, um, you know, walking around in a diaper like Ramana or anything. But um, I definitely thought he was special. If I, if I, could have fitted in somehow to go visit the mountain. Maybe I would have done that, you know, as if something was special about the mountain, you know. But we talked about this, like what made the mountain special, he did. You know, it was his, he had, he projected something onto that mountain. Pile of, a pile of dirt, you know. But it meant something to him. Which reminds me of that Robert Salston uh, uh, conversation with Jim Newman. It was really fascinating. Um, and I'd like to see more of that, you know, like more conversations. I wouldn't call them debates, but I guess you could. Um, because it brings out some really interesting stuff. And it's not important. It's just interesting. Hmm. You know, it's not important to clarify and to be on the same page and to agree and for me to get my point of view across. But it can be fun. There, there's another one actually coming up that I can't say yet. Okay. I'll see oh. it after, after this, 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 when I pause this, I'll tell you. It, it, oh. It's, it's going to blow your mind. Really? Yeah. Two yeah, titans yeah. of non-duality. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't well, want to see it as a debate, you know what I'm saying? But it's more of a conversation. It's more of a uh, a dialogue. Let's call it dialogue. It's better than people it. calling it like, you know, um, what do you call that? It's not WWE or it's not um, UFC, you know, because people are beginning to do it as a death match. No, you know, it's, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's a, conversation. It's a dialogue. It's it's a dialogue. You and I may not uh, agree on everything. I don't, yeah. You may have heard me say something that you're like. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I do but it all the you, time. With, if with you a could lot bring of that up, yeah. you could say, oh, well, that sounds like this. And then, you know, and it would be, it would be great to explore that. Well, let's get into yeah. that. You know. The next one. The next one. The next one. The next one. Um, I just wanted to, this is about you. Walter, <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing on time? Uh, we're not still about getting, me. It's, it's it's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Oh, okay. Wow. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. Um, so, oh, I was gonna. I guess I was gonna talk about Robert Saltzman. You want me sure, to go, sure, go there? Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I found it fascinating, um, and I. It was, you know, I saw it when, when it was live. And I saw you. I actually said hi to you at the end. I, I don't know. You, you didn't know me at that point. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, if no. you go to the video, go all the way to the end. Very last thing. I okay, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I didn't know you. <laughs> you didn't know me. I know, which is so cool because we uh, we met like right after that. Um, he said, well, okay, so nothing mattered. You know, I can say that because who would it matter to? Right? Um, I think you need to have a, um, well, I don't know. I, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I guess I feel like you would need a me for something to matter, to really matter. Okay? In, in the ultimate sense, uh, nothing matters. But Robert said, it matters if it matters to me. And that did hit me because we, another concept we talked about was, I give everything all the meaning that it has. Um, so nothing matters. Even that statement, I give everything all the meaning it has. Nothing matters until I say it does. Then it matters to me, it matters to the me. So when I told you I went to Stevens and I was depressed, he didn't say there's no one there, there's no depression. <laughs> it wasn't a netty netty teaching he gave me. It was, 
oh, sit down, you know, maybe uh, cut back on the coffee. There's a little meditation. Um, and it, in the, you know, maybe we're talking about apparently in the world of appearances and the real and the unreal and all that, but it felt real. You know, the me, we talk so much about the sense of a me. Why do we give it, why do we talk so much about the me? Because it feels real. So it's in that person's apparent experience, it's real. Yeah, but my comment about that, you know, is somebody, for example, is going through a lot of stuff, like psychological stuff, go seek a psychotherapist. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't look mm -hmm. at non-duality as your therapy because it's not therapy. And I think a lot of people are, it's kind of like, it's kind of like going to a math professor and saying, um, I'm feeling suicidal. <clears throat> a math professor. That's right. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? Some algebraic uh, formula that could help you with your- That's right, yeah. And you can prove that you don't really exist. Yes, 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 absolutely. That's a probably wrong analogy, but I'm just trying, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have an interview actually with Richard Sylvester and his uh, partner, Don, who's a psychotherapist. And we talk about this awakening stuff, about this kind of stuff, because this character did have some suffering, big time suffering, suicidal stuff. But I seek help. I did not go to non-duality, you know what I'm saying? And, and my, 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 um, my seeking increased and increased. I was reading more and more books. It was almost like an enlightenment or bust. If I don't get this, I might as well die. That kind of thing. Yeah. Funny how you, you know, don't, don't wish what you asked for or don't. Yeah. It was kind of funny because, you know, yeah, it was so intense, right? It was almost like a madness at the end, just kept on hitting a wall, hitting a wall. But it was the idea that the me could attain this. So I was doing my practices were getting, my practices were getting um, intense, you know, instead of an hour it became three hours of meditation and yoga, mm. eating kind of like basically grass, vegan. I was eating fruits that fell off a tree. So I would not do any harm. And the next step would be to become a breatharian so I don't harm anything. I'm like maybe <clears throat> if I don't harm anything, and then of course that would not, it's like a drug, right? That would came, came crushing and I'll be like, I just want to go to a bar and hang out with my friends and, 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 and talk shit and watch them play pool, that kind of thing. So there's this dualistic thing that was happening. There's this saint and there's this sinner fighting. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a schizophrenic character, kind of like going back and forth. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's just really, I, I lost my train of thought, you know, with the sinner and saint there, but it was a really funny um, experience for, this, for the seeker, for the me. Right, because it was going to the extremes, going back into extremes, extremely kind of like, a, why didn't I give away everything? And then there's this character that says, fuck that, you know, I'm going to go partying. And I think in a lot of seekers, there's, you know, there's this attainment. What if I do this? What if I do this? So when it kept on hitting a wall, that nothing really mattered. Nothing really mattered if this character meditated for three hours or went drinking for three hours. Meditation felt better for the body. Let's just say that the three hours drinking felt horrible for the body. Mm -hmm. I'm not promoting anything, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but it just really was meaningless. And it kept on hitting this meaningless wall, looking for meaning, mm -hmm. looking for answers in an, an answer <clears throat> in, in a question that cannot never ever be answered by the apparent mind. And, uh, went through all different you know different um avenues and trying to seek i'm like what if i do this do that do this try this try that through this what if i go to this teacher and then when i encountered the last house in the block which is you know the, the the no concession type of message the no message kind of thing it was almost like a slap in the face like what so everything that i've worked on meant nothing and the me held on so tight so so tightly right that must be a big blow to like a, a big, not a big teacher. I was not big, but, you know, a semi micro popular spiritual teacher that tried to do good. 
and tried and kept on kept on kind of like failing and getting back up again. <clears throat> kind of like kind of like that boxer, you know, um, that keeps on getting a knockdown and tries to get back up again, and keeps on trying and trying and trying um, mm. until it dies. Basically, it was relentless. It was a relentless seeking. Um, when it didn't give a fuck anymore, it just went DJing. That then apparently there's a loosening. It it was not gradual. I don't know if you know it was it was it's just a time anyway. It doesn't matter if it's gradual, but the, in the experience it was just spontaneous. I'm like what? This is it. <laughs> yeah. Without any practices. So so I don't want to mention, you know, I don't even want to be a speaker because people think that they would have to go through these stages because there's no stages. You know what I'm talking about, right? No stages. Yeah. It didn't it didn't yeah. really matter if I partied for this straight. 10 20 years or went meditation 10 20 years none of those mattered none of those none of the partying none of the meditation um there's no rules no rules <clears throat> i just bought a book ram das uh and because i like i like stories i like um autobiographies it's my favorite genre would be uh, non-fiction would be um uh, biographies, autobiographies. And I think I'm getting the name right. There's at least a movie by this name. So it is something connected with him. I'm not, I think it's the name of the book too. But if there's like um, anybody fact checking, <laughs> there should be something. Wait a minute. He's wrong. We're just all talking about bullshit. We're just two drunken people bullshitting uh, each other. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't that, I, no, no, no. Go ahead, anyway. Go ahead. Becoming nobody. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. How can you become? It's such a funny term, though. I mean, it becoming is becoming nobody. You can't become nobody. Yeah. There's no becoming. It's That's always right. already. But there's a beautiful uh, path, <clears throat> you know, death and dying. Uh, 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 beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, just really serving people. Um, and I don't know, I haven't started the book in my defense, but I know a little bit about him by a bite. Um, but um, I think I just wanted to say the name of the title. I was about to like try to get him to title my Ron Bass, but there's no point in that. Um, I think the title just struck me, this idea of becoming nobody. But I saw that as a path that he uh, maybe, and I'll read the book, but... Uh, was on a journey, a journey to become nobody. I'm not laughing at him because I did this, we all did the same thing. Um, <clears throat> of course, he's not around anymore. But um, that idea that you can get to a point of being nobody. You're already nobody. Always already nobody. You know, it's a false sense. It's a... I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really resonate with Ram Dass's teachings. I did at one point when I was seeking. I really liked what he was talking about. But I do love his stories. There's something about his stories that I really, really love. And I think when I read it, he had a book, um, I think about like a whole bunch of his audiobooks as well. Um, I used to be one of those quote um, keepers. I would have a quote and then I would repeat it to sound kind of like really wise i'm just repeating some gurus according to nisargadatta according to ram das you know I, I used to say that i don't do that anymore not because i'm trying not to do it anymore it's just fallen away i don't remember anything anymore it's almost like a a deprogramming you know like all of that thing was cult in my head you know what i'm saying all of the kind of stuff but one thing he said that i remembered um he was he was vegetarian and he was eating um you know he was eating chick, he was eating vegetarian, and then he realized that he's not really honoring um, himself because he was just being vegetarian by feeling superior to others. Yes, and that, yes. And that clicked in me. I'm like, oh no. So I've been vegan, I've been, I've been vegetarian, I've been vegan, I've been raw vegan, I was a fruitarian, I only ate fruits that fell off a tree, just to feel superior to others. And, and that that kind of like crashed them like, oh, no. 
So all those thoughts are from the me. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah. clear. Yeah. To think I'm going to eat a certain way to achieve something. Um, achieve something. But it's healthy spiritual. though. That's just going to say that vegan, vegan diet is healthy though. It's really, really Oh, healthy. well, when I say achieve something, yeah. of course, uh, I, I know what you're saying. I, I just I just wanted we to can, put it out there that that it was yeah. good when I was vegetarian. I, I did eat healthy and that was nice. I don't want to knock the whole, you know, people that are vegans and vegetarians. Um, oh, definitely not. No, no, no. That's yeah. not the point. The point is as a uh, But I was trying to attain something. I was trying to be a saint. And then at one point I was like hungry. Um and, and people thought I was enlightened. I was just really closing my eyes because I was so hungry thinking yeah. about food. But go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, don't be sorry. I was just going to comment on what you're saying, which is uh, um, that if you are eating a certain way because you think it will lead to some enlightenment, let's say, um, it's the same thing as me wanting to put wear your hat and glasses because I think I can get what you have, but you don't have it. And whatever the thing that you don't have, I you know, everyone doesn't have. That's right. <laughs> already, always, already. I, I want to it's, emphasize it's, that. Yeah, yeah. Always, already. That's why there's no specialness, and that's why it's all bullshit. Because everybody, the person with the most intense seeking, and you can hear this. You know, it's funny, uh, we're in a time now where I'm, I'm listening <laughs> to so many of these, uh, like, shows, uh, we'll call them. I don't want to call them satsangs, even, um, you know, that are broadcast uh, on the Nothing Network. You hear the callers, okay? And they, sometimes there's such an intensity that if yeah. I get my questions answered, I can figure this out and I'll be rid of this. Fucking me! It's already yeah. not there. It's already not there. That's you right. Yeah. And there's no getting rid of it. Uh, you can't have what I can't. have because I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing. But, uh, you know, that can't be heard. It can't be heard. You know, but there's so much compassion. You know, uh, the um, this is another thing about you. There is an uncompr excuse me, uncompromising message. But there's also compa and the compassion, and maybe that's not the right word. But I heard a caller um, calling uh, Neil, I think, was uh, doing the show, Austin's show. And um, the person was started crying, and you could hear the pain. And he said, you can call me anytime. Hmm. You know, and you know what? in that someone... moment, it touched, it touched me that he, it was like, hey, man, you know? I'm not going to just tell you you're not there. I mean, I might, but we can we can discuss that, you know, privately. Yeah. You know that you know, and it's not going to help. But hey, we're pe you know we're people. Here. Yeah, yeah. This a lot of people have this conception misconception about no concession kind of like message that it's harsh. But yeah. I was the host for the Jim Newman retreat that happened a couple of months ago, and you know what? That blew me away. There was so much love there. It was almost glowing. There was just, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not special, you know what I'm saying? But the, 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 the seekers that were asking were well answered by Jim. It was almost like a love fest. And people would not think that a no concession would be a love fest. It was a love fest. There's this um, garden in between where people mingle and people cry. You know, there's people that message me and messenger. I talk to them. And they're basically saying that that uncompromising is just the strongest unconditional love I've ever seen because it it chopped my my belief system that I have to attain something. The hopelessness is so beautiful. Tony Tony's retreat was I expected it to be kind of like lovey and all that kind of stuff. Because Tony has this you know really wonderful. I love him. Um, yeah. Just this kind of like stuff. But the Jim Newman thing was surprised me about it. Well, I know Jim. I talk to Jim. You know what I'm saying? And, and we, we just laugh. We just kind of like talk, talk, and we, we laughed a whole bunch of things. And um, but when people went to that retreat, 
it was incredible. It was incredible. At, at, at the end of it, it was almost like, as I said, it was like glowing in, 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 you know, because after kind of like, you know, it's almost like the, the best, there's no best, but unconditional love is being unconditional about things. And, and um, so when, when, when it's almost like a tough love, I don't want to put any, you know, definitions to it, but when somebody keeps on a saying, relentlessly saying, but there's a me, there's a me, there's a me. And when the speaker's not coddling that me, it's the best love out there. And I'd rather have that, you know what I'm saying? Because I was, I was, a, I've been a seeker for, I don't know how many, many years, a couple of decades. I wish I encountered something like that in the beginning because it, it, it would have been like completely chopped off because I would listen to some teachers before that I have to do this. You know, maybe I can just try again. And when somebody says there's no trying, there's no attaining. I'd rather have that stern, you know, um, you know, um, communication than saying that, well, maybe come back in 10 years and you'll get this. Maybe 10 more years of, of meditation. <clears throat> maybe 20 more years of this. Maybe if you practice this. So when somebody is being kind of like brutally honest to you and saying, you can't get this. Because the you is not here. It's yes. just so fucking loving. Yes. That's ah, love. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, wow. So when, when people were beginning to get that midway to the retreat, right? They were like, holy shit. And people were crying. People were kind of like, you know, it was just, so people see a, a clip of Jim maybe for about an hour or something. And they don't see the whole thing. Jim is very loving. You know what I'm saying? And, and people want to paint him as a villain or someone that is just, but he's just very direct very direct and he's no bs guy yeah i think it's different <clears throat> if you have an opportunity to sort of get to know somebody a little bit yeah um outside of the teaching or i'm calling it the teaching but it's not a teaching but yeah you know outside of these things i once um contacted I haven't seen anything from this person in a long time. It's 820. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, All right. Well, that's what I'll I mean. just, Maybe we can wrap it up. I'll just yeah, finish yeah. this thought. And um, <clears throat> so anyway, this was a popular Advaita author. Um, and there was like Sanskrit and all this and really sticking with... Um, what that person considered to be the real, you know, not the Neo Advaita, but like the original, you know, and- OG, <clears throat> the original gangster Advaita. And that person told me- With, with diapers and shit. I'll get for that one. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, was before the, it was even before the diapers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. don't know what era Adi Shankara and all that, but um, this guy told me, and this is an expert. Um, <laughs> he's like, I told him my life, you know, a little bit about my life was on. So I'm working at that time, at least sixty-five hours. Uh, two kids. You know, pretty full, full life. He's like, I don't, you can't get this doing that. You know, you have to go to India. You have to <laughs> like become a renunciate in a way, or at least for a time, you know, maybe like, I don't know. I, I don't know if he gave me a time frame, but <clears throat> that, that, that would be a requirement. And that somebody that has a lot going on, it's just, this is what it was being implied. That's not compassion. No. You know, that's not unconditional love. No. Look at all the conditions. You mean, what are you telling me? I have to leave my wife and family like uh, Nisargadatta did and go in my uh, forest dwelling stage. I never had a forest dwelling period of my life you know 
You don't need to. There's, you don't need anything. And there's and there's no. Uh, I don't know. It's just that's fine that he said that because that's what he thought. And, may, and I don't know. Maybe he did do that and felt like he achieved something as a result, and that's why he's saying that to others. I can only imagine. But yeah, this yeah. is what I would say. I would never say you have to renounce anything. Yeah. You know how many people have messaged me um, listening to some of this just YouTube stuff that's <clears> never <throat> been to a meeting that just listened to this no concession type of communication and calls me and, and tells me that, thank you for nothing. So many notes. So <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for nothing. Thank you for nothing. Yeah. Well, thank you for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I mean that figuratively and literally. Uh, you know, and I know there's other people involved, but I'm talking to you. So I just, you know, I think it's great. I really think it's great to, the more ordinary that this can be presented. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say the better, but. Even that is not true. But for me, for my, you know, what I like to hear, you know, I, I love it. I love it. Um, no, I don't like mystical. <laughs> but I appreciate it. I mean, I, 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 I think it's cool too, but, um, you know, it, the carrots, the, you have to be something other than what it is that you think you are, of course, you're not what you think you are, but uh, you have to be something other than what's appearing. You know, this, this is already everything appearing as this. So, so how, why would I have to change simple, it? right? So obvious. <laughs> so simple. And you know what? When, when speakers repeat the same thing over and over again, because it can't be explained better than it's just what's happening. It's just what's happening. I, you know, it's just what's apparently happening. I, 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 I like that, yeah. you know, and there's no, and there's nothing wrong with anybody who wants to say no, that. No, no, no. And they express yeah. this because it's, uh, it's really uh, succinct and, um, and clear, you know, yeah. and I heard you, uh, I know we're wrapping, you know, I'm not going to continue because that's, I just go on tangents. And so I think in the no, end no time for work, I but will, you said you heard heard me say what? Is that what I just said? I heard you say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was going to be after that? Um, That's okay. It's okay. We'll discuss it later. We'll I think once it. I stopped myself, I, the thought just kind of stopped. Um, yeah. I heard, what were you we saying before I heard you? Well, I'll try. I can't remember. That. Yeah. Okay. All, all, right. Right. all right. Okay. Well, well thank see, you so is, much. This is why we probably could go on for five hours. That's too, what I'm so. saying. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, fascinating. As long as there's enough coffee to keep me going. Yeah. We'll, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. I'm going to pause this right now.